everyone. In the previous class, we discussed about the elastoplastic analysis of a circular tunnel and the tunnel was uh, excavated in the rock which was following Tresca yield criterion. So, today we will learn about uh, the another failure criterion which is more coulomb failure criterion. So, what we are going to learn is uh, the elastoplastic analysis of the circular tunnel in the rock following more coulomb uh, failure criterion. So, we are going to consider the similar geometry except for the fact that here we are going to consider the elastoplastic boundary radius as d. Rest everything remains the same loading, geometry, boundary conditions everything being symmetric and therefore, we are assuming that the shape of the elastoplastic boundary is going to be circular. Any point in the domain we can represent by r comma theta where r is the radial distance of this point from the center of the circle and theta being measured in the anti-clockwise direction from the horizontal axis. So, upon the excavation of this tunnel there is going to be the formation of the plastic zone in the surrounding of the periphery of this cavity and that is going to be the loosened rock and we are representing the rock here by more coulomb criterion. So, as I mentioned to you everything remains the same such as geometry, loading condition and boundary condition except for that there is a change in the yield criterion. So, we are going to have the rock following more coulomb yield criterion. So, according to this we have sigma 1 minus sigma 3 as 2 c cos of phi plus sigma 1 plus sigma 3 sin of phi. Now, we assume the radius of elastoplastic boundary to be equal to d. So, what we have here is sigma theta minus sigma r. So, since uh, the material is following more coulomb yield criterion, so sigma 1 and sigma 3 they will be replaced by sigma theta and sigma r respectively. So, this is going to be 2 c cos phi plus sigma theta plus sigma r sin phi. Now, in the elastic zone we can write the yield condition by a single prime in this manner that is sigma theta prime minus sigma r prime that is equal to 2 c cos phi plus sigma theta prime plus sigma r prime sin of phi. This equation I will write as 1 a. And in the plastic uh, zone, we will represent these stresses using this double prime. So, accordingly, we will write in this manner that is sigma theta double prime minus sigma r double prime. This will be equal to 2 c cos phi plus sigma theta double prime plus sigma r double prime sin of phi that is 1 b. We have the equations of equilibrium in polar coordinates. We have discussed this uh, when we were uh, studying this Tresca yield criterion related uh, elastoplastic stress distribution. So, the same uh, equations are going to be here that is uh, delta delta r of sigma r plus 1 upon r sigma r minus sigma theta plus 1 upon r del del theta of tau r theta will be equal to 0 and we had 1 upon r 
del del theta of sigma theta plus del del r of tau r theta plus 2 by r tau r theta to be equal to 0. Now, what happens due to symmetry del del theta of sigma theta will be equal to 0 and also tau r theta is equal to 0. So, therefore, in the elastic zone the equations are going to be del del r of sigma r prime this is going to be equal to 1 upon r sigma theta prime minus sigma r prime. This is equation 2 and in the plastic zone we will have del del r of sigma r double prime which will be equal to 1 by r sigma theta double prime minus sigma r double prime. What about the compatibility conditions in the elastic zone? This is going to be given by this equation del 2 del r 2 plus 1 upon r del del r of sigma r prime plus sigma theta prime. This is going to be equal to 0. I will make this as equation number 4. Now, these all these equations are to be satisfied subjected to the uh, boundary conditions of the problem. So, let us uh, define the boundary conditions. So, we have uh, at r equal to a we will have sigma r double prime to be equal to 0 5 a then sigma r double prime at r equal to d minus will be equal to sigma r prime at r is equal to d plus. So, this is exactly on the similar lines as we did in the previous case because at the elastoplastic boundary just outside the boundary you have the elastic case and just inside the boundary you have the plastic domain. So, accordingly these equations are written. Then we have sigma theta double prime as r equal to d minus which will be equal to sigma theta prime at r is equal to d plus. And finally, we will have sigma r prime at r tending to infinity will be equal to sigma theta prime at r tending to infinity. This is going to be equal to the in situ state of stress that is P and we make this as 5 C. Now, uh, we had the yield conditions which were represented by 1 A and 1 B. So, we take the help of these and then try to uh, go ahead with the analysis. So, if we substitute this yield condition 1 B in equation number uh, 3, what we get is del del R of sigma R double prime will be equal to 1 upon R 2 C cos phi plus sigma theta double prime plus sigma r double prime sin phi. Now, from uh, this equation 1 b, we can write sigma theta double prime into 1 minus sin phi. This will be equal to 2 c cos phi plus sigma r double prime 1 plus sin phi or we can write sigma theta double prime as 2 c cos phi divided by 1 minus sin phi plus sigma r double prime it's 1 plus sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi. Make this equation as equation number 6. So, what we have is del del r of sigma r double prime. This is going to be equal to 2 c cos phi by r plus 1 minus sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi. 
प्लस वन अपॉन आर टू सी कॉस फाइव बाय वन माइनस साइन फाइव प्लस सिग्मा आर डबल प्राइम वन प्लस साइन फाइव अपॉन वन माइनस साइन फाइव प्लस सिग्मा आर डबल प्राइम इंटू साइन फाइव और वी कैन राइट टू सी कॉस फाइव बाई आर प्लस टू सी कॉस फाइव साइन फाइव अपॉन आर इंटू वन माइनस साइन फाइव प्लस सिग्मा आर डबल प्राइम बाई आर वन प्लस वन प्लस साइन फाइव अपॉन वन माइनस साइन फाइव इंटू साइन फाइव एंड यू सॉल्व दिस फर्दर सो आई टेक टू सी कॉस फाइव अपॉन आर कॉमन एंड देन आई हैव वन माइनस साइन फाइव प्लस साइन फाइव डिवाइडेड बाई वन माइनस साइन फाइव दीज टू टर्म्स एंड प्लस सिग्मा आर डबल प्राइम अपॉन आर and i will have 1 minus sin phi plus 1 plus sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi into sin phi so this will get cancel here also so ultimately what we have is uh, del del r of sigma r double prime uh, minus this term so this is a 2 sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi into sigma r double prime upon r minus 2 c cos phi upon 1 minus sin phi into 1 by r to be equal to 0 now you see that this is the linear differential equation so you may not be remembering how to solve this so i will just uh, take a moment to explain you that what exactly is that so this is just uh, apart from the uh, what we are discussing so linear differential equations we have seen that it is in the form of dy dx plus uh, py equal to uh, q and its uh, solution is uh, given as y into a factor if that is equal to integration q into this factor dx plus c and uh, this uh, factor is uh, defined as e to the power integral p dx this is integral p dx now what is happening in our case so if you compare the equation in the previous slide with this equation so in our case this factor if is equal to e to the power integration minus 2 sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi into 1 upon r dr so this is uh, going to be equal to just integrate it uh, so this is going to be e to the power minus 2 sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi ln r or we can write it as r to the power minus 2 sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi or we can write this as 1 upon r to the power 2 sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi this is what is the factor if in our case so let us try to find out the solution following this so let us come back to our more coulomb uh, criterion so what we have here is sigma r double prime into if which is 1 upon r to the power 2 sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi 
this is going to be equal to uh, integration 2c cos phi upon 1 minus sin phi into 1 upon r into 1 upon r to the power 2 sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi dr plus the constant of integration say a prime. So, this part will come out of the integration sign because it is independent of r and here it is uh, the 1 upon r and 1 upon r to the power 2 sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi. So, if you just uh, take or combine these two. So, what you will get is uh, 1 upon r to the power may be 1 plus 2 sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi. So, ultimately this will become uh, r to the power minus 1 plus sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi. This is what it is going to become. So, uh, the integration of this is going to be 1 upon r 2 sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi into 1 minus sin phi upon minus 2 sin phi plus a prime. So, what we have here is sigma r double prime into 1 upon r 2 sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi. This will be equal to minus c cot phi 1 upon r to the power 2 sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi plus a prime. Now, how to determine this a prime? We need to apply boundary conditions. So, we have at r is equal to a sigma r double prime is equal to 0. So, just substitute it there what we get is uh, 0 to be equal to minus c cot phi 1 upon a to the power 2 sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi plus a prime. And from here, I can determine this a prime to be equal to c cot phi 1 upon a to the power 2 sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi. So, just substitute this a prime in the expression of sigma r double prime. So, therefore, we get sigma r double prime as minus c cot phi plus c cot phi 1 upon a to the power 2 sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi into r to the power 2 sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi. Now, for the simplification in the further analysis, I just assume this uh, capital D to be equal to 2 sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi. This is just for my convenience, it will help us uh, in understanding. So, this is uh, sigma r double prime will be c cot of phi that is going to be minus 1 plus r upon a to the power d. Okay. So, I will have here this as equation number 7. So, when we are done with the analysis, we can always substitute back this expression for capital D. Now, this from this equation number 6 that we had earlier with respect to sigma theta double prime, uh, what we have here is that sigma theta double prime is going to be 2 c cos phi upon 1 minus sin phi 
plus c cot phi minus 1 plus r upon a to the power d. So, here I am substituting the expression for sigma r double prime 1 plus sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi. So, just further uh, simplify sigma theta double prime is going to be equal to I will keep this uh, first term as it is. Then I will split it up minus c cot of phi into 1 plus sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi and then plus c cot phi r upon a to the power d and 1 plus sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi. Then uh, I will have here 2 c cos phi minus uh, sorry if I just take it here as uh, this cot phi I can write as cos by sin. So, it is going to be sin phi 1 minus sin phi. So, here there will be a term sin phi uh, minus c cos of phi into 1 plus sin phi. This is what I am going to get from these two terms and then I will have here plus c cot phi r by a to the power d 1 plus sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi. So, if I just further uh, simplify this, I am going to get c cos phi sin phi minus 1 divided by sin phi into 1 minus sin phi plus c cot phi r by a to the power d and 1 plus sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi. Or we can write sigma theta double prime as See this is sin phi minus 1 and this is uh, 1 minus sin phi. So, if I just cancel there is going to be 1 negative sign and then this cos phi by sin phi can become equal to cot phi. So, I just take C cot phi common here what I am going to get. So, I will have R by A to the power D into 1 plus sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi and then minus 1. I am marking this as equation number 8. So, this is how we can derive uh, the expression for uh, sigma theta prime. It may be a bit lengthy, but it is not difficult. So, you need to be systematic so that you do not make mistake here. Now, if I just uh, substitute the boundary conditions. So, before that I mean substituting the other boundary conditions, but before that what happens in the elastic zone? Till now we saw sigma r double prime and sigma theta double prime which were the stresses in the plastic zone. So, what happens in case of the elastic zone? We know that the stresses are of this form that is a plus b upon r square which is 9a equation and sigma theta prime is equal to a minus b upon r square this is say 9b. So, I substitute the boundary condition when r is uh, tending to infinity. So, this will give me that sigma r prime is equal to p and if I just substitute it here what I am going to get is that a will be equal to p. Then at the elastoplastic boundary that is at r is equal to d. What will happen? The stresses in the elastic zone will be equal to the stresses in the plastic zone. So, 
that is what we are going to write here that is p plus b upon d square is equal to c cot phi d upon a to the power capital D minus 1. And we have p minus b upon d square as c cot phi this is going to be d upon a to the power d 1 plus sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi minus 1. So, these are the equations that we are going to get. Now, let us solve these. Uh, so, what we do is we first add equations uh, 10a and uh, 10b. So, what we will get here as 2p is equal to c cot phi d upon a to the power capital D minus 1 plus d upon a to the power d 1 plus sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi minus 1 or we can write it to be c cot phi it's going to be 2 upon 1 minus sin phi d upon a to the power capital D minus 2 or we divide this whole equation by 2. So, ultimately we get p as c cot phi d upon a to the power capital D into 1 upon 1 minus sin phi minus 1. So, I just substitute this uh, into equation 10 a. So, what I will get is uh, this uh, that is uh, p plus b upon d square. So, instead of p I will substitute this uh, c cot phi d upon a to the power capital D 1 upon 1 minus sin phi minus 1 plus b upon d square. This is will be equal to c cot phi d upon a to the power capital D minus 1. Now, you just transfer this term on the other side of the equality sign. So, what we will get is b upon d square is equal to and then we can take c cot phi outside. So, what we have is d upon a to the power capital D minus 1 and then minus d by a to the power capital D 1 upon 1 minus sin phi and then this will be minus minus plus 1. So, this will get cancelled. So, ultimately what you get is uh, c cot phi and then take d upon a to the power d outside of this bracket. So, you will have minus sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi. Then this cot phi you can write as cos phi by sin phi. So, that way uh, what you will get is b is equal to uh, minus c cos phi upon 1 minus sin phi d upon a to the power capital D into d square. So, this is how you get the expression of uh, this other constant b. Now, just substitute all these in equation number uh, 11. So, what we will get here as p tan phi upon c plus 1 is equal to d upon a to the power d into 1 upon 1 minus sin phi or we can have d upon a to the power capital D to be equal to 
c plus p tan phi into 1 minus sin phi divided by c or we can write d upon a is equal to c plus p tan phi 1 minus sin phi divided by c to the power 1 upon d because ultimately we want to find out the radius of the elastoplastic boundary which is d. So, that is why I am doing all this exercise. So, from here you will be able to get d as a into c plus p tan phi 1 minus sin phi divided by c. And now I substitute back the expression for capital D. So, that is going to be 1 minus sin phi upon 2 sin phi. Incidentally, I will write this equation as equation number 12. So, let us write the complete solution in this case. So, what will happen? What all that we have derived? So, in the plastic zone, this means uh, that R is varying between A and D. What we had? Sigma R double prime as C cot phi R upon A to the power 2 sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi minus 1. Then sigma theta double prime is equal to C cot phi r upon a to the power 2 sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi and then we have 1 plus sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi minus 1. What happens in the elastic zone? we have r greater than or equal to d. So, we just derived sigma r prime as p minus 1 upon r square c cos phi by 1 minus sin phi d upon a to the power capital D into d square. Now, from the equation number 12, just substitute the expression that is going to give you p minus 1 upon r square. So, you will have c cos phi upon 1 minus sin phi and then you will have uh, this as c plus p tan phi into 1 minus sin phi. divided by c into d square. That is what you will get this uh, from equation number 12. So, this sigma r prime will be equal to p minus d square upon r square and what you will get here? This uh, will get cancelled with this and C will also get cancelled. So, what you will have is C plus P tan phi into cos phi. So, this is what is the expression for the radial stress uh, in the elastic zone. Coming to the tangential stress that is sigma theta prime will be P plus 1 upon R square that is going to be c cos phi upon 1 minus sin phi d upon a to the power d into d square or we can write p plus d square upon r square c plus p tan phi into cos phi. So, this is how we can determine uh, the complete solution in the elastic zone as well as plastic zone. Now, here uh, you know the expression for the uh, 
elastoplastic uh, boundary radius d just find out for various values uh, what are going to be the values of d once you know that then corresponding to different values of phi we can determine uh, the radial as well as tangential stresses in the elastic as well as the plastic zone. So, this finishes our discussion on the elastoplastic stress distribution around circular tunnel. So, we in the next class uh, we will uh, start a fresh topic uh, till then just take care of yourself. Thank you so much.